Let's make it a good day. Today on The Jason Show, a new Bachelor scandal? It seems some of the biggest names in Bachelor Nation profited from pandemic relief funds. Some people aren't happy about it. Plus, frugal to the max. And we have no furniture. I only buy things if they're cheap. A new show features the cheapest people in America. And you won't believe some of their cost-cutting behavior. You know, let's start out with our lovely petunia basket. And the heat is on. So why not find plants that love the heat? Shayla from the Plant Penthouse has her picks today. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Show. <laughs> Shane Wells, keeping Jason's seat warm until he gets back from vacay. Hey, I'm Kendall Bark. I love that we <laughs> made it to Tuesday. You made it. That's hey. a big darn deal. This is a hard week. <laughs> hard week. Okay, Shane, speaking of a big, big day and a big deal in making it to Tuesday, yes. I have an announcement. It's been a week since it was me, Kendall's ribs versus the stairs versus the salad. That sounds like uh, quite the battle. I know. Quick Who refresher. Won? I'm gonna go with stairs. <laughs> stairs really won that one. Okay. So um, if you weren't around last week and you didn't see me sitting here at my desk, which as we know is a very rare occurrence. Yeah. Um, Monday night of last week, I was going down to the basement to watch The Bachelor. We have a little like, we built it bar in our unfinished basement. So I'm going down <laughs> there, holding a salad. The stairs meanwhile are those really narrow, skinny, like 1920s house stairs where they're tiny. Plus if you fall down, it's into the great abyss of the cement floor, right? <laughs> so I'm walking and I trip no. and because I'm holding the salad, God forbid I drop the salad no. and save my rib cage. Protect the salad. Yeah, yeah. your like instinct <laughs> to do that is ridiculous. Yeah. So I went into urgent care Thanks to all of you who were like, I want to to care. It's like, yeah, you're right, I can't breathe. Um, I did not break any of my ribs, just a deep contusion, very bruised rib cage. Ugh. Feeling a lot better. I actually went on the bike last night. It was nice. painful on multiple levels. <laughs> so it's a little sore today, but it's okay. Um, while we were talking about this, I found out that Shane has had a similar experience, but it involved coffee and a child. Yeah, I we have um, same thing. We have an older home, and so mm -hmm. the stairs are narrow, and it's like a skinny stairwell. Yeah. And I had a coffee, and I had the baby, who was I don't know, maybe like one and a half at the time. He's four now. And yeah, I missed that. I stepped over the baby gate. That's what gets you. Because oh. then you come in with a big step, and then you just go. And of course, the baby wins this one. <laughs> My body did not win. Uh, yeah, that was rough. And when we both mentioned we had fallen down the stairs, and I've done it a few times now, yeah. and alcohol was never involved. Just it seriously that out is there. not. Like this was sober times. Jeff was like, "What? You guys have fallen down the stairs? Both of you? Your basement stairs? What's wrong with you?" <laughs> yeah, I also because you have wine while you watch The Bachelor, and I was smart enough to be like, I'm not gonna hold wine and a salad. I need something to hold the stair <laughs> railing with. Ah, not that Oh, you were helped. even thinking about holding the railing. I really was, because oh, I, I had- Very responsible. <laughs> I did have a cup of wine in my hand and put it down Smart. before going down the stairs. Enough. Didn't matter, didn't matter. Probably would have saved the wine and the salad and then really screwed myself up. Well, we're glad that you're recovering. Thank you. And that your wine survived too, because you put it down. Yeah, thank God. And not that I drank it after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. That's not gonna help things. No. It's not. All right, time to get in today's hot dish. And it is a steamy, steamy warm hot dish. This is, this story is something. I told my mom, I said, mom, you gotta tune in. This story is gonna make you real mad. A shocking <laughs> development in Bachelor Nation. No, this isn't about a breakup. While Katie continues her quest for love, she is being upstaged by news of some questionable behavior by some well-known Bachelor alums. Thanks to the investigative work of some Reddit users, we're learning a bunch of former Bachelor and Bachelorette contestants received PPP loans during the pandemic for their influencer business. Among those outed, Ari and his wife Lauren, they received $20,000 for their company, wait for it, Instagram husband, that's what it's called. Uh, Claire's on again, off again man, Dale, he got 20 grand, as did current Bachelor co-host Tasha. 
Now, her people responded to the report. They say she hired an employee and offers market-based pay and benefits and has continued to employ that person now that the funds have run out. Have the funds run out? I mean, you can still influence all during the pandemic. So we were talking about this and we're like, isn't your only job all of you to just be on social media so like you're hiring someone to run your social media but then what do you do when well, some of them didn't even have an employee they're just them right like dale was just dale and i think lauren and ari were just those two i think mm -hmm. tisha was the only one that had an employee and i mm -hmm. think of the small businesses that couldn't get loans because the run the money had run out and they were actually denied. like think mm -hmm. of a mom and pop pizza shop i mean they right. had to close down for a little while and then even when they reopened they had to go to take out I mean, some real challenges. And they are taking pictures with coffee and posting it. Right. And also, I'm pretty sure making bank. Um, right, that's the thing. Like, it's like, I don't think you, you really needed need that it? 20 grand. No, no, touche. And I mean, so I was, my first is like, okay, let's just, your immediate reaction is what we just said. You're ridiculous. But then you're like, well, let's just try to play devil's advocates. So I'm like, okay, well, Ari and Lauren just had twins, but then you read it and you're like, oh, but they also just bought a vacation home in Hawaii. And okay. did you see when this story came out that Ari had recently posted an Instagram story of his Porsche and then immediately deleted it? Stop it. Because it's not a good look. No, not a good look. Yeah, the only ones who really seemed to respond were Tasha and then Colton Underwood's people responded because he had taken something and he out has as well. A charitable organization. Yeah, his nonprofit had taken supposedly what out. his money was for mm -hmm. to keep that going. So that has a little more legitimacy. And Tasha does have an employee, but I'm not sure if you look right. at the books, she could probably afford one without. If you need to take a loan out to pay an employee, right? Like that doesn't make a lot of sense in her business. Again, there's no overhead costs. Right, and it, and it sounds like this was someone who was unemployed, so she hired them. And you're like, okay, oh. well, that may be good on you, but also, did they? Could they have not gotten a job somewhere else? Did you really need them? This is supposed to be like we were talking about for people who already had fully functioning, running businesses. <sighs> not a good look. I no. love you, Tasha. What are you I'm doing? really disappointed. I know. I hope that there's more to this story, but I'm, I fr I'm afraid they yeah. just took advantage Some of, of them, a moment. Oh, for sure. Some of them, you're like, mm, I can see that. Ari. Dale. Dale. <laughs> <laughs> but Tasha. I want to believe in Tasha. I do. Ah. Okay. Next, the dish. Do you like a good bargain? Those people apparently do. Maybe <laughs> use a coupon every once in a while? Well, nothing compared to the most frugal mom in America. Okay, you guys, I don't really like TLC, but this is looking really good. There's an upcoming TV show that puts a new spin on frugality. Take a look. This is our house. It is over a hundred years old, and we have a ton of projects to do on it. We have been here two and a half years and we have no furniture and that's because I only buy things if they're cheap. Well, this is the bathroom. Pam came over one night and we drank a couple glasses of wine and we painted. We are going to take these hangers that we had and we're going to put this. What? In. That's a pool float. Isn't that awesome? Look, that's not bad. The floors I painted myself as well. Uh, total, this whole bathroom cost me $60. If I paid someone to do all this, it would easily be $2,000. This is our pit. Well, <laughs> all right. That's a clip from So Freaking Cheap. That's the name of the show. It wow. follows four families, including this lady, Becky, who is a self-proclaimed most frugal mom in America. Take that title, girl. She also gets her water from the river or in the winter when the river is frozen, she melts snow. You heard that right. Come again? Because tap water costs money. Okay. So freaking cheap. We'll hit TLC on Monday. Okay, so we're in her kitchen right now. She also says that like a lot of the doors are broken. The dishwasher doesn't work. She's just like, meh, because she's so cheap. She hadn't furnished the house. Like she said, they showed her scooping snow and putting it in buckets and putting it on top of the heater so it would melt. What's she saving for? Well, she What's says- What's her like end game? So thank you for asking Shane. You're so welcome. I looked into these I'm very people. curious. Like um, apparently she'd always been frugal. Like her husband sure. said that when they would go on a date, he used this example, she would get four mozzarella sticks. If she had three and he had one, she'd be like, instead of just splitting the bill 50-50, she'd be like, well, you owe 75 cents for that one that you had. 
<laughs> and he like, still married her. Yeah, he still married she, her. Like, this is going to be a lot of work. Yeah, so she said she was always frugal. And then okay. when she had her first kid, she realized she saved that first year thirty to $32,000, she said. And so she's been Most doing it now. people save money when they have a child. They end up... Right. So just she's like, I money. could be a stay-at-home mom and just do this. And so she's been doing that ever since. Okay. Yeah. So some of the other families also have some just crazy storylines. Like the one of them, um, the family has a $750 budget for the daughter to get married. That's the dress, Wait, the venue, the food, what? everything. Did you say $750? Oh, dollars. Oh, yeah. Like, that's, that's it. Okay. For a whole entire wedding. I mean, I'm not a big let's throw all the money at weddings kind of gal anyway, so I'm okay with that one. <laughs> Do you want to know what else that family does, though? What? They take, they brush their dog, and the dog hair they use oh, no, to no, restuff no. the pillows. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. They also reheat their no. neighbor's leftover pasta for dinner. <laughs> Okay, a little, I think it's good. Do not defend I, these people. I could be more frugal in my life. I could learn a few things from them. But no, that is no way to live. That just, I mean, you, like, there's got to be some enjoyment in life, right? Like, going to get a good coffee in the morning. You don't think the these people get some sick like, enjoyment That brings out of me this? some, like, pure joy. I'm like, this is worth the $5 for that darn coffee. No, those people but find a lot of enjoyment out of They're doing scraping this. the coffee grounds out of the dirt and, like, making their own thing. I always wonder if they get, like, a little bit of just, like, should we sit down and talk about this after the show wraps from production? If they're like, have you ever talked to someone about this? There could be some, um, maybe some therapy involved in this as well. <laughs> Just wondering. All right, therapy, that's what we're all about, guys. It's an hour of therapy from us, The Jason Show. Lots more to come today. Is that what we're calling this? Yes, this yeah. is pure therapy. Pure therapy. Hope you're hungry, because there's more hot dish today. From donut sundaes to Greek ravioli, the new state fair foods are out, and we've got a rundown of all the deliciousness. Plus, new drama on The Bachelorette. Now, I don't know what you're thinking right now. And <laughs> all thanks to a new guy who pops up. Producer Ted is breaking it all down. And the heat is no problem for these plants. Shayla from the Plant Penthouse meets up with Jason to share her picks for heat-loving plants. Sit back and chill. The Jason Show returns next. wave is baking the northwest of this country. The majority of the people in Seattle and Pacific Northwest do not have air conditioning or even an attic fan to circulate the air. Temperatures inside homes were up to 125 and 130 oh degrees. The legendary sitcom Frasier is getting a reboot. The Paramount Plus streaming service, a division of Viacom CBS, announced that it is reviving the show. <laughs> Dr. Fraser Crane Show. Leave a message. I'm melting! Melting! Hey, baby, I feel the tips are rising. Hot salad and scrambled brain. Oh, <laughs> man. Record temps and no AC are making life miserable in the Pacific Northwest, making it right material for Colbert and The Late Show. You lived there for quite some time, and you said it never really got hotter than 80 when you were there? Yeah, that was like the hot day in Seattle was 80. It was like, whoo, steamy. So yeah, just pump it up for another 30 degrees, and there you oh, go. God. Hopefully this breaks soon. We know what it's like. We were in a heat wave for a while, but mm -hmm. most of us have AC. Yeah, thank God. Yes, exactly. All right, next in the dish, Brit Brit getting support from, you know, all over the world, including other pop stars. So Christina Aguilera is throwing her support behind Britney. She calls the conditions under which Britney is living as unacceptable. In a series of tweets, Christina said to be silenced, ignored, bullied, or denied support by those close to you is the most depleting, devastating, and demeaning thing imaginable. Christina and Britney's relationship dates back to their days on the Mickey Mouse Club, and they were always pitted against each other mm -hmm. back in the day but no longer. Hey, Britney's sister, Jamie Lynn Spears, also voicing support. You can see it here on Instagram. She said she stayed silent because she didn't feel like it was her place to speak up for her sister, but then of course wanted to acknowledge 
I am always going to be Team Brittany. She's my sister. She said she could live, and I'm paraphrasing, in the jungle and have a billion babies, and I'd be happy for her. Or she could be a super successful star again, and I'd be happy for her. I just want her to be happy. So she said, my sister knows I love her and support her, but then Brittany came out and said, no one in my family supports me, and they've been living off me for 13 years. So I, I'm like getting two sides to that story. I thought it was weird to post a video about your love for her and not like, I don't know, reach out to her. Maybe she has. Yeah. Um, it she feels a little bit did. like not genuine. Right, right. And she says that she hasn't been using the hashtags or wearing the shirts and things like that because she's been privately voicing her support. The only reason I get an inkling of belief with her sister is because she had her own career, unlike everyone else in the family. Yeah, she made some of her own money. So, I don't know. But has she, does she do anything anymore? Because that show was when she was like a child on Disney. Zoe 101? Is that what it was called? That one. Yeah, Zoe 101? Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know, know if she's done anything since then. I think that money's probably long gone. It's dry as a Unless desert. she was a really good investor, but given what the family's doing around Brit, Brit, you don't I'm think not so? Sure. Mm. No, I don't have faith. Mm. Next in the dish, it is a blast from the past. So the stars of an or the star of an iconic '90s show is joining the HGTV universe. This one was not was what I was expecting. Do you remember this lifeguard? Gosh, I watched that show. I don't remember it being that bad. Pamela Anderson is signed on with HGTV Canada for a home renovation show. She's going to work with her late grandmother's abandoned home on Vancouver Island. <laughs> Pamela bought the house 25 years ago and promised to keep it in the family. Is this something she's known for? Um, hello. She was on home improvement. She knows how to work a hammer. Does she though? She just had to like hand it to Tim, right? Tim the two main Taylor. I forgot she was on that show. I didn't. Also, I'm still angry at her because when I was like in eighth and ninth grade, when the show was like big, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you felt really inadequate. I'll just put it out there. On all what, levels. What all the boys that you had a crush on really wanted and you did not have. Nope, you nope, putting out all there. because of her. Um, a, Ted chose that clip. You're welcome. Clearly. A lot of you. <laughs> B, I also watched that show, and it's definitely one of those shows that I probably was not supposed to watch at that age, so I probably like snuck and watched it. Towed it towed the line a little. A little bit. I um, always had a crush on Hobie. Remember him? No, I just remember the oh. girls. I just remember thinking they were very beautiful, and now I'm like, <laughs> you know. They are very be beautiful. They, were, they are very beautiful. So apparently her husband. Not realistic. Her new husband that she married in 2020 actually lives in Canada. And so she, she moved a new from husband. Malibu. Yeah, I miss that. I know. So she moved from Malibu, sold her home, and now she's like, I moved from home as a teenager to be in Playboy, and now I'm moving home with my new man. We're gonna be at the house. I don't know. I'm totally gonna watch it if I can. Are you? Good. Then you can report to the rest of us. Love it. Next up, are you hungry? Hope you are, because we're getting our first look at the new foods coming to the Minnesota State Fair this year. I'm always hungry. <laughs> the list came out just a <laughs> few hours just ago. Back to you? <laughs> Featuring 26 new foods and four new vendors. We're going through a few of them. First up, a Pizza Lucy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's a spin on the Minnesota burger, Juicy Lucy, with a sausage patty, pizza sauce, pepperoni, and mozzarella cheese stuffed in pizza dough. It's available at the Green Mill. Uh, that looks like something that you would think we could make Ted eat, but he would never touch it with a 10 foot pole, would you, Ted? No. That's a no. Uh, also, no. I've had that before. They're called Hot Pockets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is pain, everyone. No? Okay. Next up, <laughs> the Spuffle Puff. Yeah. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Uh, it's mashed sweet potatoes blended with cream cheese wrapped in dough and fried, then dusted with powdered sugar and maple dipping sauce. Woo! This is from Potato Man and Sweetie. Uh, mama. I feel like I have to, this is a lot to take in. Shane, 
Okay, I'm gonna read that one more time. Mashed sweet potatoes blended with cream cheese, wrapped in dough, and fried and dusted with powdered sugar and maple dipping sauce. These people have my heart. So kind of like one of those sweet potato pies, kind of like. Why do you keep ruining it? No, those are. I think the hot pocket was a legitimate ruiner, but to say <laughs> a sweet potato pie, like people love those. Those are like really dead. so. Uh, okay. She's giving it an okay. I'm giving it a double thumbs up. For those low carb <laughs> eaters, these are the crackling prime rib nachos or prime nachos. Pork rinds covered in prime rib, oh. nacho cheese, salsa, and green onions. We couldn't afford the picture for that one. No. This is at Coaster's much. food booth. <laughs> this isn't really my cup of tea, but I could see what people would like it. Uh, next up, how about the island hopper? Hmm, maybe mm -hmm. this is hollowed out half. Pineapple, a lot of anticipation. Filled with teriyaki chicken rice and pineapple. You'll find this at the hangar on the north end. Okay, so Ooh. the pineapple is your vessel. That's, that's, that's interesting. very eco-friendly. Okay. You can really scooping on out of there. I like the idea. Um, how do you hold the pineapple? Do, would you hold it by the like bottom or by the hook, like a handle? Yeah, like the, like you can just kind of, like porridge. Oh, just come on. Tip very Hawaiian of you. <laughs> Now for the sweet tooth yes, in yes, all yes. of us. This is what Shane's been waiting uh -huh. for. A jumbo donut sundae. Now we're talking. Sundae. This is a donut <laughs> topped with ice cream, hot fudge, and sprinkles. It's from a new vendor called Fluffy's Hand Cut Donuts. Oh, I would like to know more about Fluffy's. Well, Shane will be there in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> this is my style. Okay, oh, now we're going back to the savory, though. So Nordic waffles, we all love Nordic waffles, but yep. they're offering two new waffle wraps. So one is a cookie sandwich waffle with an entire ice cream sandwich, kettle corn, and chocolate drizzle. Okay, that would be a challenge to eat, but so good. They also have a southern fried chicken drumstick waffle with mac and cheese. So wrapped in there, a chicken drumstick, mac and cheese in a waffle. Oh. I'm really a fan of their Pebbles and Bam Bam, so I would be willing to give this a <laughs> it's try. It's like that name. <laughs> I know, me too. They can't so really good. do wrong by me. No, the waffle's so good. They really can't. Finally, a new drink. Okay. Cucumber Jalapeno Limeade, featuring oh. Minnesota-grown cucumbers, jalapeno syrup, and a cucumber slice. This is at the Farmer's Union Coffee Shop. That looks delicious. Where's the vodka? I was just wondering that. Can you spike it this? Feels like that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is right. For a little liquor, a little rummy, a little vodka. Especially if you're gonna have jalapeno in there, yeah, you might as well do it up. The jalapeno mm -hmm. makes it. I'm better. really like a, I feel like a nat, like a purist with this. I just want my mini donuts. I don't feel that way whatsoever. Okay. I want all. And that of is the why things. they create these. I love all the new, like they always do the new beer list, like True. the mini yep. donut beer, or they do the s'mores beer. I have a thing with desserts and beer apparently. Clearly. Um, they've got a thing though this year, which is like a euro. The euro people are making like a ravioli thing with okay. like feta or something. That looks really good. The State Fair, just 57 days away, Whoa. everybody. Mm -hmm. oh, that's kind of sad. That's also the end of summer. Uh, staying on the topic of food and drink, that was depressing take. Sorry, guys. A new coffee shop and cafe in Minneapolis is offering up a lot more than just coffee. Mm -hmm. Honor Coffee is all about complete morning routines, similar to the experience the owners got in Costa Rica. Shane got a chance to visit the new spot this morning. Talk about making the most of your travels. This picture is mounted on the wall at Honor, and that right there is Matt Poling, who is an owner here with his brother, and that is a farm, and some of the coffee beans that are sourced for this shop came from right there. Matt Poling joins us. That's pretty cool seeing that on the wall there. Yeah, yes. I mean, really, you did these travels, you went and toured a coffee bean farm, and then here we are. Here we are. Is that how it worked? Just pretty, like that? A little bit longer story than that, but <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, I mean, we're here to make your day better, essentially, through products and services that we sell. Um, and it really actually started with our trip to Costa Rica. Um, and we realized that we can incorporate coffee uh, into some of the products that we sell, um, which led to you know our coffee shop here at Honor. Yeah, even when you go to check out, there's like a little dash of skin products so yeah. those even come from the coffee beans correct exactly yeah so we actually infuse our green uh we infuse our skincare products with our green coffee oil uh, that we get from the farm in costa rica i like that you're you're literally using every part of it too nothing is going to waste it's all about honor right yeah. you honor the bean yeah it's a full circle for your morning ritual makes sense Okay, now we're out here. So we just talked a little bit about the coffee, but you have a lot more than just coffee. You want to walk through some of the options? Yeah, yeah. so um, at Honor, you know, I talked about the skincare a little bit, but we also have a lot of other healthy options. So we have raw juice. Um, we have nine raw juice options from sweet to green, um, two nut milks, and then a power shot. Uh, we have- Hold that power shot? Yeah, power what? shot. 
Well, so a power shot is, is mainly uh, uh, turmeric and then there's some cayenne pepper in there. So it's a little dose some ginger, of right? uh, spiciness in the morning that gets you going. That would definitely put a pep in your step. Okay, I interrupted you. Acai bowl, we got to check. Those are one of my favorites right yeah, now. Yeah, served by Bomdia Treats. Um, really good, healthy option. Um, all right. organic and there's yeah. no sugar in there. So um, yes. highly recommended for a really great breakfast option. Yum. That I think that's peanut butter drizzle on top too, or almond butter, one of the two, it right? It is, it's a, it's, it's a it's great a butter. <laughs> yeah. A healthy butter of some sort that's on the top there. Uh, obviously it's all about creating the entire morning experience. What is your, how do you start the day? When you have a shop like this, Oh, I love to you... exercise and go on a run. So okay. that's my morning ritual. I usually wake up, have some water, go maybe on a three mile run, and then I come back and have my cup of coffee. So okay. it really gets me energized. So mine looks a little different than yours, but that's okay. <laughs> I probably should be doing it your way. Hey, you have rentable bikes here too, so you can incorporate exercise. Absolutely. And do all these things. Yeah, yeah. The rentable bikes is a great option for our customers. Um, we have a bike trail right here, and uh, cool. again, it's just kind of incorporating that healthy lifestyle to, to make our customers and our you know our guests happy. I didn't get to say it in there, but their skincare products are made from the leftover coffee beans. They press the oils out of them, which are really good for your skin, and then also can make an exfoliator, exfoliator out of the beans. So we So it's all like using the coffee beans they already have. Like it. Genius, right? If you want to learn more, you can check out Honor. It's H-O-N-O-U-R coffee.com. We will be right back. I'm caffeinated. I'm juiced. I'm explained. Bum, bum. Testing one, two, three, Leo. Leo, can you hear me? Testing one, two, three. This is only a test. This is only a test, Leo. I got you. This date is really going to show who can hang, who is compatible with what I'm looking for. All right, I dare you to pick one dome and eat the entire plate of food that's underneath. Okay, that's, that's a little terrible, scary. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, they're reading the card. This is the carb station. Carb station. Ready? <laughs> we have to eat the entire plate. 5,400 calories. Cheers, Mom. Mother, please don't peel. Here we go. He's going for it. You got it, Mike! Yeah! Yeah! Twinkie boy! It was a little bit of a relief to see that it was a Twinkie, but not that it was 450 Twinkies. I think this is going to be a tough day tomorrow. I haven't had a carb in seven years, dude. <laughs> if I get fat, she better still love me when I'm older. Oh, my. <laughs> Katie figuring out who is the right there for the right reasons by eating massive amounts of junk food. So hot. So hot. Outside of the Twinkie date, there was a lot of drama on last night's episode of The Bachelorette. The men continued to protect Katie's heart. But with that <laughs> came a lot of tears and some instant memories. That means once again, it's time for Ted, I'm going to give you 78% of America loves Ted. That's the highest score you've had in a while. See, Jason's not here. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Producer Ted joins us from the control room. Good morning, Ted. Good morning. It was a lot to digest last night. So literally, literally a lot to digest. Literally. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I love when people get my jokes. Okay, let's talk about the group date. I don't, I don't understand. Why did they just eat a bunch of stuff? They seem to be doing a lot of this in recent years where they have them do like these challenges, these group challenges. I get that we are, they're still in a bubble, but come up with something else. So these guys teamed up to go try different foods and whisper sweet nothings into her ear. And then at the very end, they were like, as if that wasn't bad enough, they made them both all eat two habanero peppers. Aww. And then like proposed to her. Uh, what, what about this is attractive? Well, these poor guys, like your stomach's gotta be wrecked and now you've gotta try to impress her and oh. like keep the date going. I would be like, I'm out. <laughs> and that's probably why they haven't picked you yet for The Bachelorette, Ted. All right, before we get into the drama involving Thomas, because we kind of teased this yesterday, yep. there was a new entrant to the show. What? Yeah, and, and people who are fans of the show, you probably won't even remember this guy. Uh, <laughs> Blake Moines. Blake Moines, yes. Uh, he came back. Apparently, he's been fond of Katie for, uh -huh. you know, a week or two. 
uh, and <laughs> came back after he actually slid into her DMs. Oh. And I don't know if they corresponded much, but anyways, he can't stop thinking about her. Uh, they made it really dramatic. I mean, they really lengthened this thing out. Uh, and so he came back and professed his like for her. And did it help? Well, he got a rose by the end of the night. So, oh. yep, she woke Stop. him up in the middle of his sleep. He was totally naked and he said, uh, what's <laughs> up? And she's that. like, what, what are you doing in here? He's like, I'm sleeping. Okay, well, he wasn't the only dramatic human on the show last night. A gentleman named Trey did something that changed everything. Here's the thing, uh, and I, when you're on, when you have your one-on-one -on -one time with the bachelor or the bachelorette, you need to use it for your own personal use. Yes. Don't throw Preach. other people under the bus, but Trey was like, I have to do it, I have to do it. She needs to know how bad Thomas is. And so he throws Thomas under the bus because Thomas made the fatal error of admitting that yes, at one point in life, he thought he could be the next bachelor. That so that was that was that was bad. And so then, you know, the whole group date gets uh, you know, thrown off the rails uh, and then Katie is forced to reckon with what to do with Thomas. Okay, so two questions. What does she decide to do with Thomas? But also, did this pay off for Trey? Because most times when you become the snitch or the tattletale, mm -hmm. that is the end of your time on The Bachelor. He got the group date rose. Uh. So oh, he- Wow. He, it's totally gonna encourage all this more, all the bad behavior to keep happening, keep yes. snitching on each other, keep deflecting, you know, don't, tell, don't talk about your own life, talk about right. other people to move on. She's but, gonna regret that. Yeah. He's gone in a couple of weeks. Anyways, Probably. Thomas, back to Thomas. Uh, very strong, very chiseled. <laughs> um, she basically told him he's perfect. Uh, so we get to the rose ceremony, or the, yeah, the rose ceremony, and there's one rose left, but who does she give it to? Take a look. Thomas. What is going on? My jaw is on the floor. Like, is this actually happening? Seriously? I am literally in a state of shock at this point. Maybe this guy is a little bit better at manipulation than I thought he was. You told me things I wanted to hear. But what I learned about you tonight is you're selfish, unkind, and a liar. Your bachelor audition ends tonight, so get out. <gasps> mama oh, don't so play, good. mama don't play. <laughs> that was a big, <laughs> that heavy mic. That was a good mic drop. Uh. That was it. Bye, Ted. <laughs> Bye, Ted, thanks. That was yeah. so exciting, we don't even need Ted. No. Like, oh, bye, girl. That was amazing, all right. <laughs> uh, on that note, we gotta end on a high note. We'll be right back. <laughs> she heard, she was like, you told me things. Oh, that was great. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I know you've sat in these chairs before, but I'm like really excited. I know. We haven't you sat just... together. It's been so long. Hey, you. Hi. 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 Welcome. Thanks for joining us. It's a spot both Shane and I are loving these days. Yeah, it's time now for our latest best thing ever. I almost said that over that. Hey, today's best thing ever, things we both love and have found at Trader Joe's. Now, this all came about because we were like, a lot of people have been talking about this lately. If you don't shop at Trader Joe's, you had to wait in line to go in during the pandemic. So they were so only it's not lining. a big store. Right, yeah. they're very small. Well, now they've just been like, here you go. So everyone's been going, what are you getting at Trader Joe's? Have I ever been to Trader Joe's? Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's. Have you tried this? Yeah. Okay, so these are our things that we love. I have two food items that are just absolute staples in my freezer. We just went and got 
a lot of them. First up, <laughs> this is the lovely picture my sister took of them out of my freezer. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, the frozen saucy Wait, Miss scallops. Minnesota took that picture for yeah, you? Yeah, Miss Minnesota took this. <laughs> Gotta add that. If you'd like her to photograph your next event, please <laughs> message us. The frozen saucy scallops with mushrooms. So I found these a few years ago. You can eat them just as is. There's directions on the back. It doesn't make a ton though then, and it's really, really saucy. So what I've done for years is we just take some frozen peas or like canned peas, add some mushrooms, some onion, anything like that that's yeah. laying around. Those are the ones we always put in. And then I serve it over some rice. So not only is it like, I think they're about $5.99 for a bag of that. Oh, nice. um, But if you add all that stuff, it could serve probably three or four people. Okay. Which is great. Great deal. Yeah, and, and it's good. And it's, and it's really, really good. Okay. If you like like saucy scallops, <laughs> if you like white rice. Duh. Who doesn't? Hello. <laughs> um, the next meal, it's been on top of the Trader Joe's food items list of the year. The Mandarin Chicken. Oh, I haven't had that one yet, but I've seen it. Really it. good. Again, okay. um, so I have perfected the TJ's. It is good on its own. However, uh, I serve it with rice. And yep. then I always add a bag of the stir fry veggies. You get them in the frozen okay. section as well. It's just basic veggies, but you throw that in. And then not only do you have more food, but it's just a little less saucy. And I love sauce, but I mean, it can get. I like that they have extra sauce because some things mm -hmm. you have to like buy a second can or whatever right. to make more sauce. So. Right. Right, so those are those are my steals. When I go to Trader Joe's, I don't really go in like the fresh food section. I just go honestly all for frozen. like the frozen <laughs> pre-made meals. Uh, also, uh, before I get into my real one, the uh, pretzels with peanut butter on the inside there. Yes, really good. Oh, like the thing in the, the checkout line too. Yeah. They have like the peanut butter and jelly chocolate sandwich in the checkout oh, line. Try that. Okay, such a good snack. Um, so good. My best thing ever though is actually from Trader Joe's, but it is not a food item. Have you guys ever checked out their flowers? So we actually used their flowers for my wedding. So we had our wedding, thank you. Way thank to you. go, Shane. We had our wedding like three and a half hours away in the North Woods of Wisconsin. So getting flowers was gonna be a challenge. So I had a friend just go raid Trader Joe's <laughs> on her way up to the wedding. And we split them apart and made our own little flower bouquets. And they were great. They lasted the whole wedding and yeah. we saved a ton I know of money. you know how much money you can buy for or spend on wedding flowers. It's right. insane. And these are right. like $5, like a bundle or something. Well, Might it's one of the cheaper. best places we go always. Yeah, if you have like a gift that you have to give somebody and you're like, oh, let's pick up some flowers. There's obviously a lot of great local places. I'm not saying there's not, but I mean, those are great, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, one more wedding picture. This has nothing to do with Trader Joe's, but we got a foot of snow the day before. This is just gonna show you my, <laughs> I, I say I'm not frugal, but then we had two overnight rain boots for my bridesmaids to wear. Stop it. So we got a foot of snow. This is May. Everyone's oh always like, God. oh, you had a winter wedding. So cool. And I'm like, no, You're no, like, no, no, look, no. we're wearing tanks. It's, it's May. <laughs> oh they were very gosh. cold. They're really cute, though. It makes a good story. See? Look how fun that was. If rain on your wedding day is good luck, what's snow on your wedding day? Well, we're still married, so <laughs> must be forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> Some good odds. I mean, we made it through getting a foot of snow on our summer wedding. You can make it through anything. You're doing okay. All right, those are our latest best things ever. And now I'm hungry. Kendall's cooking. And with that, go to TJ's after the show, because we'll be right back. That's what the cool kids call it, TJ's. Duh. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> I've never called it that. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the Tuesday version of the Jason Show, the Shendel Show. I'm sorry, I called it the wrong name. How oh, dare you? Great. <laughs> uh, well, the heat returns tomorrow with temps in the upper 80s. Uh, it's been a hot summer so far, so we're used to this. And our grass and plants, well, they're crunchy. At first, when you started reading this, I was like, is this a weather report? <laughs> Great. Yes, and back to you. <laughs> but some plants love the heat and bring some color to your surroundings. So Jason met up with Shayla from the plant penthouse at Sailor's Greenhouse in Shakopee to check them out. I don't know if you can sense it, but it's hot as we're filming this in the nursery. It's a little hot. It's about 90. Uh, so this is perfect because the category today is? It is a lovely plant that'll add a little bit of pizzazz and also be able to withstand the heat. The heat. In your outdoor garden. Which I am not withstanding the heat right now, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, that's which okay. ones do we have today? You know, let's start out with our lovely petunia basket. <sighs> Isn't I it picked so fun? audience. I picked this one. I like. I like the color though. Yes. Yeah, and purple. I told you off camera. 
I would never have picked this as low maintenance slash good for the heat. Yes, and what makes it low it maintenance, you. thank you, my dear, what makes it low maintenance slash good for the heat is that as an annual, it'll continuously produce flowers. So even as you notice, as uh, flowers may start to dry out or serve their life uh, throughout the summer, just clip them off and it's gonna constantly continue to bloom. As a new gardener, yes. you do clip them off? Yes, I do clip them off as okay. they dry out. And so really what that'll allow is that to continuously bloom. Like let's say for example, that this one's little dead. guy. See, and you don't even have to do much for it. It just comes right off and that'll allow it to continue to reproduce. Okay, what's the next one? Good for the heat. Yes, good for the heat. These lovely begonias. These are actually oh. of the dragon wing variety. Oh. Is in Game of Thrones, yes. <laughs> the dragon wing variety. Yes, and I love these because they're actually a tropical annual. There are actually over 1,500 varieties. Oh. So this is just one, I know, I know. <laughs> and they have hardy leaves, and this is one that they will continue to produce these um, beautiful flowers throughout the summer. I know I'm asking dumb no, guy it, questions. No, but no, no, so I'm a new gardener here too. Just like this, do you pull the dead ones off as the season goes on? Yes, as okay. it starts to get crispy, and really also it's just for, it's, it's more aesthetically pleasing, yeah. right, when you have the lush flowers to look at. Pull the crispy ones off, pull the crispy <laughs> ones off. Okay, we have one more? Yes, yes. yes. And this is our lovely moss roses. That's beautiful. I've never right. seen those. I know, right? I love I'll them because, interestingly enough, they are succulents, moss roses. And so what differentiates a succulent is that they actually store water in the leaves. So that's why they have that fleshy look. And these are great for uh, anywhere where you're having high heat because they're able to withstand it. Like right now yeah. in this nursery. <laughs> like right now, exactly. Look at them thriving. Look at them just blossoming. <laughs> <laughs> thriving, not so thriving. <laughs> Yeah, me on the, on the inside, maybe? Yes. <laughs> so these are another one where if you skip a day of watering, um, because they are a succulent and store water within the leaves, you will still have it. Perfect. I wish I could store water. But don't you just like pull a little water? Yeah. I just need a little backpack. A little backpack okay. of water. I love it. Okay, <laughs> let's go find that dog. There's yeah. a dog around here somewhere that I really... And there's a child right there. There's a... <laughs> <laughs> Are you heat resistant? I mean, the dog gets heat resistant or heat avoidance. He's the only smart one today. <laughs> Look at him. You are smart. Good boy. <laughs> I thought that was gonna be Mr. Big for a second. Just for like a half a second maybe. Nope. We were just talking about how now we've become people that we, like our mothers, and we're like, we ask for gardening books, and we go for gardening sales. It, that feels like a real adult turn. We are. Me. We're yeah. adults now. This is the we Shendel garden. Show. <laughs> you can follow Shayla on Instagram or head to theplantpenthouse.com for more of her tips. Yeah, we'll be right back. No, I was just talking wrong about gardening books. <laughs> just came on. <laughs> Welcome back. Hope your Tuesday's off to a good start. The coffee's strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of the show on YouTube. We post each day's episode along with clips from the show. Just search The Jason Show and click that subscribe button. It is The Jason Show. The Shendel Show is just a joke, but like for real when we're sitting here. I mean, it needs a little bit of a update, a zhuzhing. <laughs> it's a zhuzhing. Here, I think, just yet. <laughs> We'll be right. A little extra care. <laughs> I don't know the last time I said that word. <laughs> Welcome back to the Jason Show. I had a moment where I was gonna be like, Friday. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just wanted to. Wishes. Because it's like 4th of July weekend. Oh, yeah. So you're yeah. like, oh, we're rolling weekend. into like some fun. Well, good for you. Thanks. I'm already there. I'm still on Tuesday. Hey, more hot <laughs> dish. The long wait is almost over, everybody. Demi Lovato's short form talk show is ready for its big debut. 
short form talk show. Right. What Conveniently called the Demi Lovato show. It will air exclusively on the Roku channel. According to a press release, each 10 minute episode will feature <laughs> a special guest of, to talk about topics like activism, feminism, gender identity, and bo body positivity. So things that are really easy to talk about in 10 minutes. Right. The show was originally <laughs> called Pillow Talk with Demi Lovato. It was supposed to debut last year on Quibi, but things didn't go quite as planned for that short form streamer. If you remember, it kind of was donezo by October. Didn't it hit the airwaves by like August? It was on for a while. Yeah, oh. and I think. I missed that. <laughs> Hence why it's 10, 10, 10 minute conversations. It's gonna hit Roku at the end of July. We know you were waiting. Everyone was waiting. Were you actually waiting? You know, Demi Lovato is one of those people I could do with a little less of her. Of, yeah. Of her. Yeah, Demi's, um, this is something that I don't think we need. I don't think we need this. <laughs> I don't maybe think we need a 10 minute her. talk series about anything. And like you mentioned, 10 minutes is not a lot of time to dive into really serious topics. Like podcasts, when they get right. on the, it's like an hour. I mean, right. you're, and you have multiple like experts and people who can talk you through those things. So right. um, is this just a tester to see if she could have like follow in Kelly Clarkson's footsteps, but go like deeper topics? <laughs> She's hearing the groan from the side of the room over Can't there. Me, well, we know how she feels. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, okay, you get, so, Gloria Steinem comes on the show and talks about feminism for 10 minutes. Really? Like, that's that. It just seems, it just seems way too short form. And honestly, um, Demi, love ya. I just, I don't actually don't, I, no, I don't need this. I just don't need any more Demi right now. I love her music. Yes. I'll put that out there. Music's good. Love Music's her jams. Good. Tomorrow on the show, what happens when two Marks are on TV at the same time? That's like me, me, Mark. We shall see. Miss Minnesota! Ellie Mark, she's coming on the show with us tomorrow. I did, it took me a while to put it together. That's so fun! Yeah, she's gonna play a game with the us. The Mark Sisters. Yeah. And then Shane and Kendall. And then they're gonna get their own show. The Mark Sisters following the Jason Show. Hello. <laughs> Bye everybody, see you tomorrow.